Live from downtown Detroit, Local 4 News at 6 starts now. A woman out cleaning up her neighborhood is stopped in her tracks by the sight of a deadly weapon just lying in the street. Good to have you with us for Local 4 News at 6. That woman says someone decided to just throw away a gun with no regard to the safety of others. Yeah, and that includes children who could have found it and picked it up. The gun was found on Florence, just west of Telegraph on Detroit's west side. Sean Lay is live. Uh, Sean, you got a chance to speak with a woman who found this weapon while she was trying to do something nice for her neighbors. And it took her breath away. She says the officers that arrived to get the gun were also very surprised at this find, very relieved. No kid picked it up. Thank goodness she did first. Again, this happened right off very busy Telegraph Road. It's clear someone drove into the neighborhood and threw a gun out the window. Take a look. I have a grabber doohickey thingy. Every Sunday like clockwork on Detroit's west side. Every Sunday night I pick up garbage in the street with my grabber. Making this area of Florence right near Telegraph sparkling clean. Because people drive by and throw their trash out in the street. A lot of liquor bottles get smashed and I just do it to keep my block clean. We are not identifying her because when she picked up this little bag, what's inside truly scared her and she wants to stay as safe as possible. I seen it Saturday. My grandkids were running back and forth. I told myself in my head, if that's still there, I'll get it Sunday. And there it is, a handgun right along the curb. It had been there since at least last Friday. I opened it a little bit and I seen the gun and I was like, Holy crap, with bullets and everything right in the back. This is a full size semi automatic handgun. DPD came right out to get it and to start an investigation on it. Who dumped it? Was it used in any crime? Was it used to shoot anyone? And they were very grateful that I, I found it, not a kid. We've got like 10, 15 kids right here on this block. And if it was summertime and that was there, they would have found it. Same block last summer, this gun found in a yard here, tossed from a car speeding by. They found a nine millimeter in the yard, laying in right there at the driveway. Back here live, that's two handguns within about five houses on the very same street right off of Telegraph. Thank goodness she picked that up before a kid may have picked it up and see, try to see if it would work, something like that. Now, serial number still on that gun? We don't know, but if it is, police and the feds will be able to see who bought the gun. Was it stolen from that person who bought the gun? And perhaps if it was used in any crimes. We're live tonight. Sean Lee, Local 4, back to you. Okay, Sean, thank you. A mother fearing for her life ended up dying and causing the deaths of two of her three children. Sheriff's deputies found their bodies in a Pontiac field, the boys without winter coats, hats, or gloves. A 10-year-old daughter survived the night, awoke, took her mother's coat, and looked for help. Rob Maloney, live tonight in Pontiac with the question of what could have prevented or helped prevent this horrendous tragedy. This is just crushing, Rod. Yeah, it is, Devin, and, and it's a mental health issue. That's what the Sheriff's Department is telling us, 39-year-old Monica Kennedy, afraid that people were out to kill her, including the police. Her family that supported her wanted to get her help. They say she refused. So when I come back here in just a second, we're going to be showing you the phone numbers of the places where if you are a person in crisis or know someone in crisis, you can call and get the help you need. This crime scene from November 4th, 2021 in Pontiac, we're told, is what brought us to this weekend's tragic death of a mother and her two sons in this Pontiac field. 29-year-old Kyle Milton shot and killed along with a friend at a party. The shooter's trial ongoing last week, Sheriff Mike Bouchard saying. Incredibly sad on so many levels. Cause of death was determined by an autopsy today. Hypothermia, the determination that the death was accidental. Uh, but I would put accidental slash preventable. Bouchard said Monica Kennedy had concerned family who tried to get her help and she refused it. She told her children to run from police and they apparently wandered around for at least a mile from their Pontiac apartment Saturday, winding up in the field next to Crystal Lake. Monica reportedly taking a drink from the lake at one point. Oakland Community Health Network Chief Operating Officer Adam Genove tells Local 4 there is help available. Well, there's a lot of resources for for individuals in the in the community with uh, you know whatever they're going through. Um, that's why we're here. That's why we're here 24/7 uh, to to help the community, to help the people who are in trouble, who need help, who need assistance. Pontiac City Council Member Melanie Rutherford represents the district Monica Kennedy lived in. 
And when you have the strong woman syndrome, you don't want to ask anybody for assistance. And then you get to the place where you feel like it's not worth it. And so what we have to keep reiterating is that mental health is real. It is something that is normal. It is something that is treatable. Now, you just heard from Oakland County Health Network COO Adam Genove, and he says you can call this number at any now, we just heard from uh, Adam Genove from the Oakland County Health Network, and you can call any time at 800-231-1127. I'll repeat it, 800-231-1127. That number also gets you to the service called Common Ground. There's also a non-emergency number, 248-464-6363, where you can also find help. Devin, back to you. Rod, how did the, the sheriff rate these services you, you're talking about? Well, he says they're very good for the amount of service they can provide, but he says this is a much larger problem than the resources they have, yeah. and he feels that the state and even the federal government need to get involved, he says, because people are dying daily as a result of this mental health crisis. Horribly, as in this case. All right, Rod. Detroit police shoot an armed man at a gas station on the city's west side. Police say the man walked into the sitco this morning on 8 Mile in Berg locked the door and started waving a gun around. Police say he pointed the gun at customers inside and then police when the police got there. The entire thing was captured by green light cameras. It appears that he points the weapon at the officer at some point. Officer is yelling and you can hear the officer yelling, drop the weapon, drop the weapon, and the officer fires multiple shots. Police say the man did not fire any shots. The man was taken to the hospital where he was alert and talking before going to surgery. No one else was hurt. Police are still investigating. A driver is pulled over for extreme speeding in Warren, and then state troopers made another discovery. Michigan State Police found this loaded handgun under the passenger seat of the car. They had clocked that car at 114 miles an hour in a 70 mile hour zone on I-696. The 31 year old man behind the wheel did not have a concealed pistol license. Police seized the gun and have taken the driver into custody. It's been a day of joyful celebration in honor of the late Dr. Martin Luther King Jr. In Southfield, they held an annual peace walk this morning, originating from Hope United Methodist Church. The event returned after two years off due to the pandemic. On Detroit's west side, people gathered for a rally, a march, and a meal this afternoon at St. Matthew's St. Joseph Episcopal Church. Another big MLK Day event has been going on uh, downtown at the Fox Theater, bringing out some big names like U of M football star Blake Corum and the Reverend Jesse Jackson. Our Paula Tupman is there live after getting a chance to speak with Reverend Jackson. Hi there, Paula. Good evening. Hi, good evening, good evening, everyone. Yeah, lots and lots of events all around town. Detroit Historical Museum, too many to name, too many to cover. We got to as many of them as we could. This one was particularly interesting also because of Reverend Jesse Jackson. I, I do want to tell you, he may not be in the greatest of health, but it is clear his brain is still in the fight. <laughs> At Dawson Elementary and Middle School in Detroit, the unveiling of a new mural in the Hall of Murals. Justice Kyra Harris Bolden, the first black woman to be seated on the Michigan Supreme Court. I'm just so honored to be here and to be alongside our first black woman on the United States Supreme Court. Civil rights icon Dr. Reverend Jesse Jackson says in 2023 that we are still talking about the firsts when it comes to minorities, instead of it being commonplace, is an issue. We're still a generation of first, this, first, that. In ill health, still marveling at his own recovery from COVID, the words may no longer shake the walls in the way Jackson has stirred souls in the past, but it is clear his tongue is betraying the still brilliant brain that remembers every highway and side street that has been the winding road of civil rights. We are facing severe threats. Uh, rise in anti-Semitism, rise in the uh, uh, Asian bashing, and the anti-Hispanicism, and the racism. The sense that uh, somehow, probably by blacks and other minorities, net lost the whites, including these the growth that growth everybody the wins. Musician and recording star Kim at the Fox Theater this evening for a celebration says, but not for Dr. King. He could not eat or stay at the very places 
he performs. When the musicians used to have to enter in, in the in the back way and stay at a, at a at a separate hotel, you know. So yeah, you know we don't we don't know what we don't know what that is. It's it's everything, you know. Uh, the work that uh, that he did is in part the reason why I'm standing here today, and I'm able to move about the way that I'm able to move about, and I'm able to do the things that that, that I'm able to do, you know. So lot, lots lots of gratitude. Yeah, I mean, those are some of the things maybe we don't think about, uh, but we should. And there's still a lot of work to be done. Um, uh, Reverend Jackson was also talking about voter uh, voter rights and and voter registration. And, you know, everybody should be encouraged to vote instead of trying to keep you from. I mean, it goes on and on and on and on, which really boils down to. Yeah, you know what? There has been progress. More progress is needed, however. Guys. And I love what you said about Reverend Jackson. His, his mind is still in the fight, yeah. even though his speech is slower. Clearly. Yeah, yeah, clearly it is. Okay. Yeah, yeah, it was very obvious. He understood, but it just couldn't get to his mouth. Yeah, yeah, indeed. Okay, Paula, we appreciate your report this evening. This is a lot that he wanted to be, be here. Be here, in exactly. As yeah. you imagine, his invitation card is pretty full yeah. on a holiday like today. Let's check in with Kim. We've got a busy radar right now. A lot of Kim. green behind you, Kim. Yeah. There is a lot of green, and you might notice some pink as well. Now, this may be falling as sleep, but most of it, by the time it reaches the surface, changes over to rain as our temps are above freezing. But we have had a couple of reports of a little bit of sleet in Ferndale. It's not affecting the roads, but it is raining fairly heavily in some spots tonight. It's kind of that cold rain as we have temperatures right now in the 30s. So here's what we expect this evening. That rain will continue up through about midnight, maybe one o'clock in the morning and then start to taper off overnight. But we'll be watching the temps very closely. At this point, it does look like they will stay above freezing and then things get really warm by tomorrow and through the end of the week. Right now, though, it's 38 at City Airport, 36 in Pontiac and Mount Clemens, 34 in Howell and in Ann Arbor. If you want to take a look at the radar and want to know exactly what's going on in your neighborhood, when the rain will come, when it will end, just download the free forewarn weather app and then you can have the interactive radar right in the palm of your hand. It's free. Just go to your favorite app store, type in WDIV and download the forewarn weather app.